Hello and welcome to Let's Play Legend of Zelda The Minish Cap. This is 100 Wolf JR, and today I will be doing things a little bit differently. I'm going to show you all the side quests you can do at this point in the game and really all it is is fusing kinstones and collecting heart pieces and uh, just a few other minor things you don't really need to do to beat the game. Um, I'll just start off by seeing a whole bunch of different things you can do. I can um, fuse kinstones for heart pieces for rupees and for certain locations that really don't even matter. Enjoy. So here what I did is I actually had to look for um, a person who has a bubble over their head that has a heart in it. The heart indicates that it's going to be a heart piece location and usually those guys are uh, have you know they require a red kinstone piece of some sort to fuse. Other guys like this uh, for rubies and stuff usually require green, sometimes blue. But um, yeah, it's basically and you get green kinstone pieces randomly from like a bush or from a monster or something. But anyway, this guy gave a golden rope. And um, once we kill it, as you can see, it does not die very easily at all. But once we kill it, it's going to give us a nice whopping 100 rupees. Back in Hyrule, we can fuse some more kinstones for good luck. And uh, this guy, you'll see a blue one. What it does is it unlocks this, which is just a fairy fountain, a small fairy fountain. It's got nothing in it but but three small fairies, and that's it. Um, continuing on from there, we just uh, shrink down to diminish size, talk to the dog, try to fuse kinstones with him since he's going to give us rubies if that happens. Once we do that, we find out it's going to unlock the golden... golden... Golden Octorok here, but we can't actually access it just yet. Um, after that, shrink down to minish size in the bar and make your way on over the bridge. First thing you want to do for sure is talk to this dog and then try to fuse kinstones with him. I did it the other way around for some reason, but you can't, or at least I couldn't because I use all those types of kinstones. Once you talk to him, you can um, actually access this area once you're big and you don't have to turn down a minish size every time you want to get over here. Because um, you'll find out later that there's a quite a useful spot down here. This area here is where you turn in your mysterious shells for figurines. The way it works is you turn in well, the first time you turn in one, and since you don't have any figurines yet, it's going to be a 100% chance you'll get a new one. Now, the next time you try this with one, turning in one, it'll be a lower chance. But the more seashells you um, opt to turn in, the greater the chance. And that'll only, you know, you can turn in one until you've got like a 60% chance to get a new one, and you still most likely get new ones every time. The, the time you actually want to um, stop turning in one and start turning in two would be, I don't know, when you've got like 40% chance. Anyway, uh, getting a little behind myself here, we got our, used our 300 ruby cap to buy our boomerang, which was quite nice, and um, then we made our way on over to the Minish Forest, but instead of taking the usual bridge, we took a fork up the road and found a fairy fountain here. You can't actually go in here and talk to her unless you have at least one ruby. Because she asked for you to donate them. And even though you don't really get rid of your rubies, uh, you still need them to trigger the event. Anyway, back up here, we uh, used our Kinapaki right here, North Wallon Ranch. And there's a golden chest there for 200 rubies, very nice, and a heart piece. After that, we make our way on over to the west and go up Mount Cornell, and there's this 
One part you might have noticed while exploring that you couldn't access because it has these glowing panels and you can only use those after you've obtained the white sword and fused two elements with them. And here you'll find a dojo with a piece of heart and two chests containing a total of a hundred rubies and Master Greymate, I think his name is Grey... What is his name? Greyblade. Greyblade Grey will teach you the roll attack and uh, it's a little hard to master at first but you know try it out a few times and you'll get the hang of it quite easily. Get another tiger scroll for roll attack and make your way on over down to here. You might have noticed this earlier. This is a place where this is the same cave where we got our first bottle. And we actually get to go to the left this time since we can actually push that. And this place is actually the place where we need to go to progress to the next um, area. But for now, I'm just going to grab a few things that are not quite necessary to the game. Like that red kinstone piece, and this guy here, who I have no idea who he is. Apparently he's into kinstones and poetry. Anyway, back in Hyrule Town, suck up that dust you see on the lower left, or lower right, red square in the main courtyard. And once, you know, once you do a few things and just whatever, take your time and you'll see that this merchant named Beetle comes along and sells you jars of Picolite. It's called Picolite and each one has its own effect. Uh, one will give you a better chance to find rubies, another will give you a better chance to find hearts, another will give you a better chance to find bombs and arrows, another will give you a better chance to find mysterious shells. Basically anything you find on the ground that mobs drop or you find from, you know, slashing bushes, you get a better chance of finding those depending on which char you get. After that we make our way on up to the Hyrule Courtyard and we can actually access that eastern area until we trigger the event that comes up at the end of this video. You'll find that um, I was just at that one dojo. We can't actually speak to the master until uh, we have the uh, lantern. Anyway, find another, you know, just find any kinstone piece guy you can find. And if you're lucky, you'll get, you know, another chest here. This chest actually was not so lucky. It only contained a red kinstone piece. And this one was, you know, a little less lucky than the other rupee locations I found. I mean, basically what it does is it leads you to this secret cave here. Ding. Come on. There you go. Secret cave there, and all it has is just a whole bunch of rupees worth five rupees each. Just a lot of those. And, I mean, I guess that's worth a lot, but that's all it was. Kind of clunky there. And now we are finally at our main storyline part. You'll see here that Vadi is invading the castle of Hyrule. And he has devious plans for the king. Possession. Anyway, he's gonna send his guards out to look for the light source, light force. Sorry, and um, basically, yeah, that's we, yeah. King's kind of evil now. Anyway, gonna cut it off here. That's all you really needed to see, and I'll see you guys next time.